It was the night that redemption came down. I confess, though, that during this season we fall for all the commercialism. We even become forgetful of those who have little and we splurge on ourselves. Our priorities become confused because we forget the Lord in the manger. We forget the life you lived, the teachings you taught, the death you endured. And we get distracted by all the commercialism. So would you forgive us? Because it's not done intentionally. Forgive us when we become greedy and short-sighted and stubborn. Forgive us when we forget you, the Lord in the manger. Let me take a moment of silence, Lord, just to confess our failings in this season to you. And as we confess, we hear your words to us, you are forgiven. Father, in this season, we hear week after week the story of your birth. God in a manger. Christ on earth. Emmanuel. God finally with us. So would you move in us as we worship today? As we reflect on you during the season of Advent. Would you move deeply in us, profoundly, touch us anew. As we hear the story again of that lowly crib in a barn, move in us as we listen again to the story of the humble shepherds that came from the fields. Move in us as we listen to the story of the wise men that traveled from distant lands. All these people that participated in the birth of the Messiah who came to bow and worship you. And God, if we are afraid of anything this Christmas or anxious about something in our lives, may we hear more clearly than ever before the same words you spoke to those fearful shepherds and to Joseph. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Because the news you bring is good. And brings joy. And you are God, Emmanuel, with us. So God of the manger, become God of our minds and become Lord of our lives. Father God, this Christmas, would you fill our hearts with kindness, fill our actions with caring, our spirits with gentleness, so that we can become more like you, Jesus. God, and you chose the most unsuspecting of woman to mother your son. Mary was filled with joy when she received the good news that she would birth the Son of God. That in her arms she would cradle God. With that same joy, may our souls magnify you this Christmas. And our bodies be the means through which you continue the mighty work of salvation for which you came. So speak to us again this morning as you have done over the weeks through the words of our worship, through the prayers aloud and silent, through your precious yet powerful word and the content of the message. Be born in us again. In the name of the one born in Bethlehem we pray, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to invite those who are reading to come forward. It's Elaine and then Donald this morning. Let us pray. Father, as we hear these words that you have given us, open our hearts and our minds to your truth. In Jesus' name, Amen. First reading this morning is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 16, verses 5 to 11, on page 604, for those of you who are following in the Pew Bible. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. 
The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You, have known, you, have made, you make known to me the path of life, You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Good morning, congregation. Good morning, Donald. Our second reading this morning comes from the first apostle of Peter, First Peter chapter 1, I'll read from verses 3 to 5. A heavenly inheritance. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in a heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Thank you. Kids, if you want to go to Sunday school, you can do that. The final reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, reading from verses 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that we will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and he is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, The shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. May God add his blessing to his word this morning. So Christmas is a time of giving. A time of giving. Ever since the wise men brought their gifts with them when they traveled from the east, their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, people have been exchanging gifts at Christmas time. And this year, like Every other year, millions and millions of people all over the world will open their gifts. And when they open them, they will realize some of them won't fit. Some will be the wrong color, many will be returned, and many will be exchanged. But there's one gift that will never wear out, one that's never going to break, one that will never need repairing, one that will never be returned and will always fit. A gift that's appropriate for a child, a teenager, an adult, anybody the gift we all need and it's the most valuable gift we could ever receive it's that baby in a manger so on Christmas day we celebrate we celebrate the fact that God gave us the gift of his own son his one and only son Jesus Christ that through faith in him we can be forgiven 
of our sins and we can have the gift of eternal life. The Gospel of John says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. And Romans says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life. As they have sung, the gifts that Santa brings are, are based on whether you've been good and nice, and according to Santa, naughty as well. But we don't have to be good and we don't have to be nice to be accepted but God. We don't have to be good and we don't have to be nice to receive the gift of the baby in Bethlehem. It's his perfect gift. It's his free gift to you. So there are gifts for you this Christmas. There are gifts that God has for you. Let me tell you about a few. The first is the gift of God's perfect plan. His perfect plan. I spoke last week about a decree that went out from Caesar Augustus. He was the most powerful figure in that day. And he just decided that he would start taxing people. So everybody had to return to their town of origin. It was a law. You had to obey the law. So for Joseph, that meant he had to go back to Bethlehem because he was in Nazareth. Am I not, am I not audible? Speakers what? Oh, it's not plugged in. Oh my gosh. Shall I start again? <laughs> Is that better? Start at the beginning now. The decree went out. <laughs> So it was law and you had to obey the law. That's better. <laughs> so for Joseph, he had to leave Nazareth and go to Bethlehem. He's engaged to Mary. She's heavily pregnant. I'm echoing. She's heavily pregnant. Nobody on that day would have saddled up a donkey. Nobody. To go to Bethlehem with a heavily pregnant teenager. But when the decree came out from Caesar, the ruler of the day, Mary and Joseph had no options but to go. You see, man made a decree, but God had a far greater plan. God had a plan. Man may have made a decision, but God had a purpose, and God had a plan. And God took the most powerful leader of the day, the most powerful political leader, leader of the day, and said, guess what, Caesar, you are going to do today. You're going to tax people, and you're going to send them back to where they came from, because I, God, have to get Mary, and I have to get Joseph back to Bethlehem, and I've decided I'm going to use you, Caesar. So off they went, Mary and Joseph, to arrive in Bethlehem. So on that night, God, who had appointed from the beginning of time that his son would be born to, be, to fulfill all the promises in the city of David, would be born in Bethlehem. Emmanuel, God with us. You see, Caesar may have thought he was in charge that night, but he was not in charge. God was in charge that night. And God is still in charge today. Not the doctor, not your boss or your employer who is waiting to decide if your job is going to stay or, or go, or if you're going to be retrenched or go on early retirement. Not a judge who is going to decide if your company's lawsuit will end up this way or that way. They may think they're in charge, but they are not in charge. God is in charge. They may have a plan, but God has a far greater one. Those people may be in the story, 
but God is still in charge of your life. And as you wait in life, there will be many bumps in the road. But in the waiting, God says, I am with you and I am in charge of your life. And my plan is perfect and that's his gift to you this Christmas. He has a plan for you and he has a plan for your family and it's perfect. The second gift he has for you this Christmas is the gift of heaven. We read from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 5. There's something stored up in heaven for us. You see, all the good stuff is not under the Christmas tree. All the good gifts are not in the mall or in gateway. All the good stuff is not online. There is something really good stored up in heaven with God for you and me, even right now. One miracle has already happened, that God came to dwell with us on earth, but just for a season, just for 33 years of his life, And the second miracle that we are still waiting for is that one day he will come and he will fetch each one of us and we will dwell with him in heaven forever. That's an amazing thought. That's an amazing gift to be offered to him, that one day we will dwell with him forever. What we got on Christmas and what we still celebrate and waiting for may be quite amazing. And it is. It is amazing. If only we would realize that, then we would be less stressed about what we don't have right now we would be far less stressed about that. Because Peter says, I've stored up an inheritance for you that can never perish, never spoil, or never fade, kept in heaven for you. Because the gifts will spoil, and the gifts will fade, and the gifts will perish. But what I have stored up as a gift in heaven for you will never perish, and never fade, and never spoil. If you ever wondered, just for a moment... What are you going to give Jesus when you see him one day? What are you going to give him? A hug? Yeah, that's nice. The wise men gave him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh and they bowed down and they worshipped him. What are you going to give him? What are you going to give him? When you arrive, Jesus is going to give you a gift, I think. It's not going to be based on the amazing talents that he gave you in your life. It's not going to be based on your on your ability to have attempted to be perfect. It's going to be based on your faithfulness. Were you faithful? Did you love him? And I think based on that, he's going to say to each one of us one day, Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. And he's going to hand you a crown, says Revelation. He's going to hand you a crown. The Bible speaks of the crown of life. The Bible speaks of the victor's crown. The Bible speaks of the crown of righteousness. And it speaks of the crown of glory. And when Jesus says to you, thank you for being faithful. Thank you for not giving up. Thank you for allowing me to use you to touch the lives of others. Thank you for, thank you for, uh, for believing that heaven is a better place and there is a heaven. Thank you that you... you You didn't believe that earth was your home. You accepted that you were just passing through. Thank you. He's going to say, thank you and well done. Here is your crown. And Jesus is going to say in that moment as well to you, I didn't miss anything. I didn't miss any part of your life. I was right there with you. I saw it all. I saw the pain and I saw the suffering and I saw the tears and I didn't miss your faithfulness and I didn't I didn't miss your worship towards me and I didn't miss the way you loved me and told others about me. I didn't miss a thing. He's going to say, here's your crown. And I'm sure, I mean, I'm speculating. I'm sure in that moment that he hands it to you, you're going to take it off and you're going to put it back at his feet and you're going to say thank you and give him a hug. And you're going to give it back. And I'm sure that's the gift you're going to give him. Because he has a beautiful gift for you and it's in heaven. The third gift is the gift of joy. We lit the candle this morning. Now, I'm prepared to put money on this. I'm tempted to ask, but I'm not sure I should. But I know. I think I know. You're all secretly hoping for a special gift, eh? There's just something you're thinking, damn, I wish I could get that. Eh? 
Anybody want to tell us what it is? <laughs> 1944, a song was written by a music teacher. After asking his class what they wanted for Christmas, he wrote the song in So the song was written in 1944 by a teacher after asking his class what they wanted. Two front teeth. There is joy that comes from the special gift of Jesus. But the angel said to the people, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Good news of great joy. The Greek word there for great joy is, is megas. It's the idea of mega joy. Mega joy. Paul asks a very very penetrating question in Galatians. He says, what has happened to all your joy? What has happened to all your joy? When things are going well for us in life, we are happy. When things are not going well for us, we are unhappy. Joy in, in Scripture is the experience of not allowing our circumstances to determine our mood, or not, a, not being shackled by our circumstances. 
gift of joy for you this Christmas. Allow the baby of Bethlehem to be born in your heart. Receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Remain close to Jesus. David in Psalm 16, which we read, writes about the source of his delight, the source of his joy. He says, you fill me with joy in your presence. You fill me with joy in your presence. The announcement of the birth of Christ was good news of great joy. It's joy to the world. Joy to the world. I think that's the gift we silently all want for Christmas. Joy. Some people too front teeth, but I think for the bulk, the majority, it's joy. The story of Christmas is that the Lord has come, and we must rejoice. We sing the song every Christmas. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him. Roman, heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy. So our daily and our weekly worship is a foretaste of the eternal worship of the Lord before His throne, where for all eternity, one day when we receive the gift of heaven, for all eternity, we will do exactly what that carol says, and we will repeat the sounding joy of the wonders of His love. That's what we're going to sing one day, repeatedly. No more let sins and sorrows grow. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and the wonders of His love. You and I, before His throne one day, will repeat the sounding joy of the wonders of His love. It's His gift of joy to you this Christmas. And lastly, it's the gift of a Saviour. A Saviour has been born to you, said Luke, and He is Christ the Lord. The word Saviour means the one who will deliver His people. And the word Christ means the anointed one. This world and so many people in it desperately need a Saviour. Desperately need a Saviour. When the angel announced the birth of Jesus to Joseph, gave him the name Jesus, because he said he will save the people from all their sins. Matthew said, you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. He is the Savior. He is the Lord. He is the Christ. He is the one sent from God. He is, and this is the heart of Christmas. That God would love us enough to send his one and only begotten Son. That's at the heart of Christmas. The gift of a Savior. He definitely wasn't a Presbyterian because he would have sent a committee. But he didn't send a committee. He didn't write a book. If the world needed education, he would have written manuals and written books. God would have sent a teacher. If the world needed an army, God would have sent a a general or whatever. If the world needed more money, God would have sent a banker. But God sent his only son. He didn't send a substitute. He sent himself. He sent the best. The world needed a savior. So God sent a baby. Not a committee, not a teacher, not a banker. God sent a baby. This is the miracle of Christmas. It's almost a surprise. It's, one, it's, it's a wonder. It's a delight. It's a great joy. Emmanuel, God with us. The virgin will give birth to a son, said Matthew, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So over two thousand years ago God sent a gift to you, wrapped in swaddling cloths and placed him in a manger Jesus, God's gift to you but you'll never experience Christmas joy until you personally receive and accept the gift into your heart Ephesians says for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves it is the gift of God It is the gift of God. The Bible so often talks about Jesus as the gift of salvation. And when Jesus met the Samaritan woman at the well, he said to her, if you knew the gift of God, if you just knew the gift of God and and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. 
Jesus is in essence, in essence saying to her, if you knew the gift of God, you would gladly open your heart and you would receive and you would drink deeply from this precious gift. The gift of Jesus is a solution to our problem of sin. He came to set us free from sin. Every gift that you're going to receive this Christmas, as I said, will be returned. It will fade. It won't last forever. It may even break. The clothes that you're going to get will eventually be worn out. The toys you give your kids will break. But the Bible reminds us that God's gift lasts forever. For all eternity. God's gift. He didn't wrap it in shining paper put gold or green or red ribbons on it. God laid his Christmas gift to us within a manger bed. No silken cord was used to bind the gift sent from above. It was wrapped in swaddling cloths and bound in cords of tender love. There was no evergreen to which his precious gift was tied. Upon a bare tree on a hill, his gift was hung and died. It was taken down from off the tree and laid beneath the soil, but death itself could not destroy the precious gift of God. With his mighty hand, he lifted his gift from out of the stony grave. To everyone, a living gift he gave. This Christmas we say thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Amen. Your tithes and offerings will be received.